You decide you want to go get some pro-level boards that you've seen them using on TV, only to find out they're over $500, not including the bags. Well, I built my own premium cornhole boards, complete with vinyl wraps and custom bags for half the price. Check out this video to see how I did it. Starting out, I cut my board at slightly over 48 inches wide to make it more manageable for the table saw. Regulation cornhole boards are 24 inches, so with my fence set there, I cut out my first top. Then I ran the second board through to clean up the cut from the circular saw to make my second top. Bringing my fence in to 3.5 inches, I used the rest of the plywood to rip out the boards that I'm going to use for my frame. Once I have those all ripped out, I cut them down to the appropriate lengths. Now this is completely unnecessary. I decided to be a little fancy with this build and use box joints. So I threw together this little jig out of some scrap wood and a fiber board I had laying around. That worked pretty well. Check that out. Nice tight fitting box joint. But like I said, completely unnecessary and I probably won't use it in the future unless requested because it added a little bit of time to the build. And in reality, all you need is some butt joints with pocket hole screws. Quality Control decided to stop by while I was sanding and he's really impressed with my new 3M Extract Sander, as am I. Check the link in the description for this and other tools. Nice, now I can speed this up. And he's back. Oh, hey look, that's nice. Oh, I see how it goes. Guess I'll just have to go get my own. After quenching my thirst, letting the sun go down and putting quality control to bed, I came out and started assembling the frames. Some of these box joints take a little bit more encouragement than others. And some of them slide right into place. When I find one that needs a little extra encouragement, I get the motivation stick out. After getting all of my joints connected, I use my 90 degree clamps to make sure everything dries up square. Repeat the process and my frames are done. The center of the hole is supposed to be nine inches from the top and centered widthwise at about 12 inches. I go ahead and mark these up before doing my round overs because it's easier to measure off of a square edge than it is a rounded one. I round over both sides of the tops and the bottom of the frames. Then using my Craig pocket hole jig, I make pocket holes to attach the frames to the tops. Using my God-given glue spreader, I apply some glue, then place the frame where it goes on the board and attach it with pocket hole screws. Time to saw out some holes. Now this hole saw is scary. It's six inches, it's heavy. Make sure you get one with the locking pins, otherwise it will spin off and fly across your shop. Now did I say it was scary? This thing tried to break my wrist a couple of times, but I got it done. Then I rounded over the edges of the hole, flipped over the board, and rounded over the edges of the bottom side of the hole. Let's just take a moment and admire that beautiful hole. That is nice. I'll repeat the process for the other board, and now I have a set. On to building the legs. I used a can I had laying around to mark the circumference, then used my jigsaw to cut close to the line, and then my sander to get it even closer to the line. Once I was happy with that, I clamped all the legs together and used my sander to line everything up and make it nice and pretty and neat. I went ahead and drilled the hole that the bolt is going to go through. And I did the same thing on the frames. Moving to my table saw and using the dado blade, I carved out the spot on the legs where the crossbar is going to go. It's a pretty nice little fit. With one final cut, I bring the legs down to the perfect length to have the top of the cornhole board sitting at 12 inches. Time to install the legs and glue the crossbar into place while quality control takes a play break in the background. Once that glue is dried, I'll bring in my sander and clean up the edges. 
Nice and smooth. And then more sanding. Man, I wish I had a Craig to make this go quicker. You know what? I do have a Leonard. Leonard, get in here. That's right. If you want to make your sanding go faster, just clone yourself. It's easy. Once all the sanding was done, I wiped it down with a damp cloth and let it dry. Came back to apply the coat of polycrylic. Then lightly sanded it, wiped it down, and applied another coat. Then did it again for a total of three coats. Lining up the vinyl wraps I got from cornholeboards.us, I create a little hinge in the middle, pull the vinyl back away from the backing to create a little flap, cut the backing off, then take that flap and place it on the cornhole board. I'll run my squeegee over it to get it to stick. Then I can remove my hinge. Roll the vinyl wrap back up and peel the backing off from this side. Now it's just a matter of working the vinyl down. This was the first time that I have done this, so it took me a little bit to get the hang of it, but it turned out pretty dang good. Taking my knife, I cut out the hole and then start to trim the edges. Oh, that is so satisfying. Nice. With the wrap installed, I go over it with the heat gun to make sure and get that adhesive activated. Wipe it down and then come back with some more polyacrylic over the top to protect it. I ended up putting two coats of poly on, making sure to get all of the edges nice and sealed up. Off camera after the poly dried, I buffed it smooth with a white 3M abrasive pad. And here's the finished product. Hey, that wasn't even close. The hole's over here. <laughs> if you like this video, click the subscribe button down below. And if you would like to get your own vinyl wraps and bags, there's a link down in the description. And check out my other videos like this one right here.